I think that we hardly have an inkling as to the real nature of the world and the real history of life on this planet. Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and I'm really excited about this show because one of my favorite topics is art and what inspires the artist and leading edge creativity. And that's why I'm talking to my good friends, Umo and Tico. They have been on the art scene, on the visionary art scene, creating some phenomenal works. Let's talk about the art because they're not just glowing images. The subject matter of the alien consciousness and the higher levels sort of uh, reflect a new consciousness. So we'll talk to you first, Tico. What, what, do you, what are you envisioning when you paint these things? I surrender to the source that I connect with. I don't question what comes through. I'm just a humble servant. So painting is a form of, of meditation. It's a form of sacred prayer. And so these visions come through, um, downloaded by plant medicine ceremonies, by yoga, by dream time. And so I'm just a humble vessel. Uh, and for you, what happens in you with your painting? Um, it's just uh, visions, you know, part of my experience as being on this planet and plant medicine uh, journeys that I usually go on into my consciousness, dreaming runs and connection to other planets and the life in the universe. But when so, you say plant medicine, you mean like you were taking ayahuasca when you paint these? Ayahuasca, mushrooms, peyote. But if you're not taking the plant medicine, does, do other images come out in you? Uh, for myself personally, yes, because they come through in dream time. They come through uh, very sober states. Uh, they could even come through when I'm riding New York City subways. Uh, what kind yeah. of images come through there? Uh, well, it's just um, it's almost uh, as if um, as if like the the mind is an antenna, uh -huh. right? And so uh, these images are being transmitted by the ether of consciousness. You know, it's it's a mind field, mm -hmm. and so um, by uh, by getting out of its way, we're, as, as an artist, I'm able to kind of bring it into this, this realm and share it with different communities and tribes. I mean, that's what I think is so amazing about art is that it's a communication of mm -hmm. other realities. Yeah. So do you go to, do you feel yourself journeying to these? Yeah, I mean, when I'm painting, I'm taken by these energies and these visions that I'm having, and I just allow my hands to be the vessel, you know, or my consciousness, you know, and allow my body to just flow. I don't even know what's going to be on the canvas when I start painting. Maybe I have a slight idea, but then I just feel energy coming through me and just creating this, you know. Do you feel something wants to come through you mm -hmm. in order to communicate with the rest of humanity? Is that is that what you guys are? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel kind of like there is a message, you know, mm -hmm. so that always has to be like a direct connection with the source of the universe and then that needs to be put into something material so that others can receive it and then get that transmission and kind of like uh, wake up and feel something f from the images you know something that could open them up more you know i mean what do you feel tico when you're painting do you feel like something wants to communicate through you to give the rest of us a message? Or? Most definitely. I, I think that <clears throat> as an artist, if we allow ourselves to be a vessel and not have the ego become like an obstacle, um, then we could be in a pure state of consciousness, you know, and tap into that in an honest way. Wow. I've never personally had any formal art education. Wow. I'm self-taught. I've loved art since I was a kid. And so these are like transmissions. And I'm just a humble servant to these transmissions. Transmissions from where? Where are these <laughs> guys come from? It could be like anywhere in the universe, like you know, because think about it. We're on this spaceship that's traveling through the universe. We don't even know where we are. So wherever we're going through, we might be picking up energies and thoughts and feelings from anywhere in the universe. So you think the ETs, and <coughs> I believe in ETs, are using you to... <laughs> as a vessel to communicate like some knowledge they have or something they want to tell us? I sense that there is a, um, a deeper, um, let's say, a consciousness that, that uh, permeates 
the brush strokes, I, like Umo, I don't plan my paintings necessarily. A lot of it is like 99% improvised. And I just get out of the way, and, and and it's really surprising to see the outcome. You're even surprised. I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That happens. So, what do you think? Like, like is something? <clears throat> what is you painted this one? This what? is a, a a collaboration between Umar and myself. Mm -hmm. And were you on the same frequency when you painted this? Yeah. Well, when I started that painting, it was like I, I just started going, you know, and then the center. You know, I just felt like that was a portal, you know, and then something wanted to come out of there, and then these beans came through, and I just started painting them. Did you them. see the beans? Well, they... I started seeing them with my mind, and then, you know, they started come getting onto the canvas, you know, and I started painting, and then I was, I showed Tico, and we had been talking about doing a collaboration, so, so I'm like, I'm going to finish this part, this is the, what's happening, and then you take, take on, you know, on your, your journey and fill it out and then he continue with, you know, what the vision. What does this say to you? Does this have a message for you particularly? Yeah, for me, I mean, I, I painted the left side and so this a divine feminine being appeared um, that was uh, kind of transmitting her energy of the star child through this wormhole of uh, infinite awareness. Mm. And so she, uh, if you look at her mindscape, um, it, it's, it's the, the Ouroboudo, it's the infinite right. symbol, you know. And so art, art is, is infinite, really. I mean, when you think about the power of art to heal people and, and to um, translate imagery that, that, um, that connects us to our, our divine creativity, right. Uh, that's when when magic really occurs, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the ancient cultures uh, throughout throughout um, millennia, you know, there's a lot of very magical, esoteric art that these cultures have created, you know, and tapped into. Mm -hmm. And so, in the modern context and in, in, in the present, um, I feel personally that I, I want to be part of that tradition, you know, and and uh, working with fluorescent and UV art is a way of like um, kind of keeping in touch with that tradition if, if you know. So no, I totally get what you mean. So it's like our sub your subconscious as an artist is talking to the subconscious of the viewer mm -hmm. and communicating symbols that we may not be aware of like on the everyday mm -hmm. level, but these, this kind of art is impacting us to think differently. To really create new realities. Sure. And so, mm -hmm. how do people respond when they see your work? <laughs> wow. We don't know how narrowly channeled the manifestation of organic intelligence is. Does it always have to be in a body? Does it always have to be in a body that stands upright with binocular vision? I think the real task with dealing with extraterrestrials to know when you've got one. It's always a very interesting uh, reaction that people people get, you know, because first of all, we, we usually give them the glasses, the oh, okay. chroma depth glasses, which, you know, allows you to see the paintings in 3D. Mm -hmm. And it's something that most of them have never seen, so they, they can't believe what they're seeing, you know. And plus, you know, they're very cosmic and psychedelic, mm -hmm. so that makes it even twice as more intense for them to see this new reality that they've never experienced. Plus the message, you know, is very intense, you know, they're like, who are these beings? Where are they coming from? Why are you painting this? So it's very interesting to talk to them and share our vision with them so it could actually open up their mind. And it really does open up their it mind. It does. It does. I mean, I've had people <clears throat> react in some very incredible mm -hmm. ways. I mean, there's waves of emotion to come through uh, mm -hmm. the people that, that I've had people like you know like cry uh, or and say uh, you know I've had those similar visions how did you know that you know to get into my mind or um, so it's interesting how like let's say plant medicine or, or psychedelic states of consciousness is, is kind of like um, a similar experience for for humanity right yeah. but then you don't need the met once you have the communication then mm -hmm. people you save people the process of having to do the plant medicine because you're communicating those messages right through these images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I know, we consider ourselves as art shamans. You know, we, yeah. we travel through these different dimensions and, um, and which allows us to bring back these images mm -hmm. into these realms and to share it with different tribes and communities.
Yeah. And so, um, without people having to take the, those medicines, or if they don't... Well, if they want the to, I guess they could, but yeah. it's like, this is already a medicine, in a sense. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. It it's is. a therapy for people to just be being able to see them, you know? Yeah, like, this is a real... E these E.T. surrounded by these other sort of E.T. Did, was this a special being <laughs> for you? This was um, uh, an, a... a vision that I had during an ayahuasca ceremony from earlier this, this year. Uh -huh. And these entities came through and... Um, they came through in the painting or they actually saw these? They came through in, in, during my ceremony. Oh, wow. And so um, I received, a lot, I received like, a lot of downloads during those ceremonies and they, they say, okay, this is what you have to paint this year. They told you, this, we want you to paint this. That's right. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. is it that they're trying to communicate in this painting? It looks well, like these particular uh, beings were, were very uh, benevolent. And um, they, they, they approached um, uh, my, myself um, with a lot of compassion and a, lo and a lot of love that they're, that they're here overseeing the evolution of humanity uh -huh. and um, th that they want to wake up humanity to um, what we're uh, experiencing uh, in, in this realm, you know? Well, you know what these paintings do for me? They remind me of how complex the universe is. Mm -hmm. You know, on this 3D, we think it's... it's pretty basic here, yeah. but there's pretty so solid. much, we're full of energy, there's energy all around yeah. us. It's all energy, and, and you we guys, solidify things in our reality and we make them material, we, we but we're actually pure energy, you know? Yeah, and you guys <coughs> are capturing, you know, the pure energy mm -hmm. and what's sort of what's mm -hmm. really out there as yeah. opposed to like the filters we put on what we think is possible. Yeah. So visionary art is the process of expanding our mind yeah. to show us there's so much more to reality. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it. I mean, humans, um, in most cases, we're limited to very, uh, very limited spectrum of five senses. Okay, uh, but right now, as we talk, there's these parallel dimensions of of, of energy and, and uh, deities or mm -hmm. you know entities that are here with us as well. It's just that the naked human mm -hmm. eye you know, cannot capture it unless if you, you know, tap into that. Yeah, there are so many dimensions between us, you know, we can't see that because our, our speed, our frequency vibrates at a, very, uh, at a certain rate, but there are others who vibrate slower or higher, and that's why we can see them, but there are so many beings in between us but right now. But when we tap into the creative uh, <coughs> mode, something else seems to want come mm -hmm. through us to communicate those other levels of reality. That's what's so exciting, and, you know, would you say that um, there's a shift in humanity? I mean, that's what I talk about, the shift in humanity that's coming to, to live in those other dimensions. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Well, <clears throat> we're, humanity, I feel, is on a cusp of, of a true revolution, evolution. Um, our DNA is not fully activated. Are, we're using a very small percentage of our minds. Mm -hmm. And so th these beings um, are, want to welcome us to the, the cosmic an ancestral family, um, but they see that we're at war with each other. They see mm -hmm. that we're destroying our planet, and they feel like you know, hum humanity is not ready. You know, we're like infants in the grand scheme of the cosmos. And they want to help us, but they feel like we need to help ourselves first, mm -hmm. wow. you know. And, our, and art has a way of, like, you know, bringing these entities to the forefront and, and ho hopefully, cre you know, create some thought-provoking conversations. Yeah. You know, we're being so filtered by the mainstream media and by all these different, like, um, uh, governmental agencies that don't want for us to know what, what our true origins are. You know, mm -hmm. and it's really up to each of us to tap into into that, you know, our ancestors. Right. Well, yeah. me and you, Umo, we uh, did the Crystal Skull Conference, and yeah. then three days ten, ten, later, ten. right? You that captured, was tell us what you captured on video. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so much was going on around that time. Even three years before that, uh, a woman in Australia, she channeled some beings from uh, Federation of Light, you know, and, and they were supposed to show up, you know, and show everyone that we're actually not alone in the universe. Right. And it didn't happen in the way people were expecting it, but it happened to so many of us, you know, in mm -hmm. different ways. And 
every year after that, around that time, there was always something going on, a lot yeah, of UFO over. sightings yeah. and all that. And in 1010, <clears throat> there was um, uh, this conference and this uh, thing that we did, this gathering of the certain crystal skulls. Yeah, it was a great gathering. And in the same area, right after that, uh, I think it was uh, three days after, yeah. um, <clears throat> they showed up. You know, it, they were Manhattan, all over Manhattan. Manhattan, it was all over the news, you know, I was actually able to be in the city at that moment and, and I was able to videotape them, you know. I, I have had the uh, privilege, I would say, you know, to be able to see them a lot and photograph them and, and take videos of them many times, you know. And I think, you know, these images <coughs> help us get used to these other dimensional entities. Mm -hmm. We need to be exposed to art because art yeah. shifts our awareness out of the mundane. And it because it changes everything, you know, the energy of the place, you know, like right now, this energy of this room is being changed because these things are here on us, you know. Right, and so people it looking at it on camera, it, through the it, television, uh, increases consciousness throughout the universe. And By just looking other at Other beings can things. feel that. Yeah, who can feel it? Other beings. Other can, you know? beings can feel mm -hmm. our yeah. shift. <clears throat> yeah. So what's... Do you feel like you're, uh, where are you going with this? What do you feel like your destiny is as an artist, painters, creators? Personally, this is part of my mission here on Earth. And I'm honored to be a vessel for that mission and to be able to share this with different communities and tribes around the planet. Um, I think that there's many shining beings out there out there now, but we're we're being so um, manipulated and oppressed by low frequency uh, media manipulations, fear tactics used by our governments and by organized religion to keep us divided and keep us in a state of war and fear. Art has a way of, of, of uplifting the consciousness. I mean, visionary art for the most part. There is a lot of art that is also very degrading and very right. low, low frequency, unfortunately. But for the, for the most part, the visionary, visionary art community internationally is a very uplifting community uh, of, of shining beings that, that want to bring the beauty and love and compassion and the messages from the, uh, these other realms mm -hmm. into a grander conversation. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and ancient civilizations have been trying, you know, have been doing this in their own right. Ancient Egypt, you know, um, going back to, uh, to Gobla Tepe and, and to, you know, the Mayans and the Aztecs. Native Americans, you know, they all had visions of these star ancestors. And, you know, we see it from as early as prehistoric cave art, you know. And so, once again, being part of that lineage or part of that tradition, you know, we share a, a lot of this beauty mm -hmm. that's possible for, for humanity. Yeah, you know, they are beautiful and, and, and stimulating. But, you know, what I do, why I do the show is mm -hmm. to open people's mind. But, you know, there's a whole population that wouldn't know what to do with looking at this, <laughs> right? True, true. You look at these and they, they, they haven't cognized... But it, it wakes them up, you know, in a way it touches something in their spirit that mm -hmm. they can remember, you know, and that's what art does, you know. Right. It doesn't, you need to read anything, it just, you just take it visually and it just like sparks something in your spirit. And it, in a, it can actually, like, open you up more, you know, to see other realities and other things, you know, that are there, but people can't see them, mm -hmm. you know? Well, let's talk about this one. It looks like a male and female <coughs> form. Um, what was the vision behind that one? I'm just curious. Uh, this is a painting also that came from a mushroom ceremony uh -huh. about two years ago, and I saw the divine masculine and the, and the divine feminine and locked into this infinite eye gaze. Uh -huh. And so between um, themselves is the, as an energy field, you know, so we, we all have our boundaries, you know. Um, so basically, uh, uh, Castaneda talked about the, uh, the, the Nagual. The Nagual is like, a, like an egg-shaped energy field that, you know, that extends out to the to the forefinger and so we all have these these energy fields so when people get in your face or in your space you know you feel like almost as if you're being intruded but when you're you're locked in an eye gaze with your partner or a stranger you know you tap into their their essence and so i wanted to to depict these beings locked in that gaze and you there's a there's a merging in an eye gaze you know? there is mm -hmm. and that's why you yeah. see their 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 hands are, oh, are yeah. connecting as one. Yeah. 
mm. you know, their, their wrists are connecting as one and creating a, a, a pyramid. You know, and within the pyramid is, is this the star child, once again, ah. the star fetus. I wonder if you painted like an uh, alien type creature looking at us and, and, and channeled that through, if we'd be able to get into their reality with then Like a wormhole. Yeah, like it's a wormhole possible. through the alien eyes that <coughs> you guys might paint. I'm just throwing yeah. that idea. I'll you if you want, <laughs> yeah. because that's... Because they, they could be painting you here, you know, and it's kind of like a connection that you're making with uh, something else, like a different force out there, mm. you know? Do you think with so. these paintings, the alien consciousness is present here because you brought them here? Is this, do you feel that? Like yeah, I believe that because uh, it creates like a, a shape in the universe, you know, and it, everything's like numbers and like mathematical equations, so it creates like a result that has like a configuration so oh so it by actually, painting it you're saying there's a resonance mm -hmm. in this reality with those other realities mm -hmm. so by bringing these forms into <coughs> our world we are resonating more yeah with those frequencies yeah exactly. and it creates like what i saw like a configuration of energy that could have the spirit of these beings that we're seeing and then putting on the canvas you know Wow, that is great. So the configuration, <laughs> you manifest them into, these are like pa doorways then. Yeah, yeah. These are portals themselves. That's right. Into the resonant forms of these <coughs> other dimensional uh, beings yeah. that are now living in this reality yeah. because you've brought them into our awareness. That's and right. I think it's the same thing with everything that humans imagine, you know, like, like our mind is part of the universe, right? And there are universes of universes, you know, this is infinite really. But everything that we imagine or put on a movie or on canvas or painting or write, you know, or, Im or imagine fantastical beings, you know, mm -hmm. they are somewhere in the universe because if our, ima if our mind is Im imagining and thinking of them and bringing them into these realities because they are somewhere out there, you know? Mm. How does time, time travel relate to some of this? I'm just curious if you get any images of like, you know, different time flows and dimensional historic times. Does that come to you at all? What, what is time? Mm -hmm. I mean, time, mm -hmm. you know, is like a man-made construct, mm -hmm. you know, and so, you know, the idea that, that the past, present, and future all coexist parallel in some ways is a very intriguing concept, you know? And so time travel, I believe, um, is, is really, a, happens in, I don't know, for myself personally, in, in dreams or during ceremonies where I, I go into future lives or I go into past lives or, or I, I go back to the original cell of where, you know, this DNA, you know, the origin of, the, of, the, of our DNA. Mm -hmm. So it's a fascinating concept, really. And I, I mean, how do you, tap into into well, that like there's when i see <coughs> thank you for asking because when i see a painting or an image it is like a frozen moment in time mm -hmm. and that transcends this movement we call yeah. time so in a way these images themselves even a photograph stand outside of time so mm -hmm. they're in another dimension or... Yeah. It's yeah. like a time capsule. It is like a mm -hmm. time capsule, but it's a time capsule that's present and also of the past. Of course. And yeah. But these are present, but also of the future. That's what I'm seeing. But sure the is. future, what is the future, you know? Maybe, maybe when the ancient Egyptians were here, mm -hmm. it's not really the past. Maybe it's the future, you know? And we're, in our mind, we have to organize things, you know? And of course, we want to organize time to be practical about this reality, but how do we know that that was in the future, you know? So when you're painting, do you feel like uh, anything is possible? You just open, or do you find like your personality comes up against yeah. some blocks and say, no, I can't go there because it's too way out. Do you, is that <laughs> what happens? Not just when I'm painting, everything is possible, always. Always. You, know? yeah. you just have to be open to that reality and to that truth. But and does then, your personality conditioning, you know, come up a little bit to get in the way of, um, or um, you, I got, maybe art transcends that, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, think so. I think if you're pure and you surrender to what, what the transmissions are coming through, then there, are, there should be no, bond, no boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, who, 
you know, who sets the rules? Right. You know, the, the, the cosmos is, is full of mystery. Mm. And so when we start questioning and getting in the way, when our logic starts getting in the way, then we limit ourselves to what our true potential is. That's you know, right. and so why lack ourselves or why, you know, place us in a, in a stereotype or like mm. a limited perception? So you feel painting art creativity is a way to tap into the mystery because yeah. we don't know what's going to come through, right? <clears throat> Most mm -hmm. definitely. That's yeah. why I like doing, when I took pictures, these kind of images over top of images, I never know what was going to show up because mm -hmm. it was like co-creating with the universe, the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we allow the non-ego self to tap in, the more it actually serves everyone else. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're surrendering to a grander um, consciousness that is way beyond what our our conditioned perceptions are, mm -hmm. and and that's what you know society in, in a lot of ways is stuck in a very conditioned mindset, <coughs> and that's why there is a lot of fear, and that's why there is a lot of ignorance within humanity because that conditioning since childhood is a way of indoctrinating our consciousness into into their mold, mm -hmm. into a mold of, of, of like really nonsense, of really trivial garbage that doesn't serve our greater purpose. Mm -hmm. We as yeah. humans have a greater, much greater purpose mm -hmm. in this world than, you know, than, you know, gathering materialistically, than mm -hmm. plundering the planet. war on yeah. people. I mean, it's so primitive. It is. <laughs> you know, here we are in 2018, and I can't believe that, you know, that war still exists, that we're still, yeah. like, you know, using fossil fuels, that we're still, you know, in a, in a slavery mode. You know, there's so much more beyond that, and art has a way of, of like, you know, like saying, okay, wake up now. You know, it's, it's really time for humanity to, to wake up from this slumber. I think yeah. art is why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here to be creative <coughs> beings and, and allow ourselves to feel more through our expression. Yeah. So what's the most far out you want to go? Like, what's your <laughs> vision of, like, how, what's, what's <coughs> the furthest you can think or imagine at this moment? Umo. This moment. Well, well, or this, next moment. <laughs> this, well, this moment is all we have, you know. Yeah, and so it what, spans throughout the universe and through give us some the forever really now, you know. It feels like, let something, I'm just curious if anything's coming to you, like, which is really unlimited into this moment. Yeah. Does anything come? I mean, yeah, our consciousness is uh, a spark of energy. And I think if we were actually being able to tap in to the real present moment, we would become pure energy. And that's kind of why, you know, painting is a very powerful tool to, to get into that energy, you know, to like bring that present moment and put it into that uh, canvas and that artistic uh, vision that you get, can share with others. But uh, when you're tapping into such like energy, you can actually feel a lot of, you know, a lot of energy within your being. But if you are actually being able to become pure present, your body probably couldn't take it and you would probably become pure energy. No, I think our bodies can take it. I think we're vibrating quicker and quicker and we're Maybe at some point. Higher. But then you would turn I, into pure energy, I believe. I think we are pure energy. Let's go for it. Lose the body, the physical body. Let's take the body with us. Become you can. Like, like Alex Graysworth, you know. Mm -hmm. I, are you influenced by him? Alex is, yeah, Alex is a great mentor, and uh, what he and Allison are doing at Cosm is something that is very special for our mm -hmm. times, you know, and there's a lot of great visionary artists that are out there that are, you know, shining the light on and exposing the darkness, you know. Right, mm -hmm. well, I'm just also mentioning him because his, some of his paintings show the physical body transmuting into light. That's right. And I think that sets a kind of um, vibration for mm -hmm. us to attain. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the footage of like um, the, the moment that, that that a sperm connects to the uh, the uh, the egg? Uh, no, of the, what happens? Um, it, it, it sparks into light. It does. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, and so that light That's is when the is consciousness, consciousness. kind of like takes. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, you, you got to see. You, you got to see it. It's so it's amazing. Human form. I will. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. tell me about this film that we're gonna um, roll in here. What did you do in the film that's different um, than the art? It's an idea that's been coming to me for a while, you know. And uh, I also do uh, something I call cosmic shamanic sound healing, which 
as came to me very organically throughout oh, the years. Oh, we're going to play that too, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and and so, but the film itself, what is, what is the idea? Uh, well, um, when I was uh, recording the, the album, uh, which is, this is uh, my second album with the shamanic sound healing that I do, I just uh, released it recently. Uh, so the film is uh, connected to all the sounds that are in my album. So it's kind of like a journey throughout the universe where there is a lot of, um, I don't want to say alien, but more cosmic family connections, you know, that are being traveling through the universe and picking up other races uh, of beings uh, from different planets and then keep traveling and then uh, sharing uh, and spreading the light throughout the universe. So it's like a very psychedelic 3D journey that we, me and Tico created together. Mm -hmm. You know, and he has the soundtrack of my album. Oh, good. So it's like a journey. So, like let's a roll that. Sound, uh, visual journey. Let's definitely roll that mm -hmm. in here. <laughs> type forms they they are just pure energy and pure color it's like they're interactions of color um grouping and regrouping and sharing information through like a color resonance mm -hmm. i get those image of like flowing colors like that does, does that make sense well when you think about it colors are are very healing properties mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. colors and art and you know music all forms of the art when you think about what what the middle word of earth is it's art, yeah. you know, and art comes mm -hmm. from the heart, mm. you know, and so we're here to be creative beings and not to be slaves of a nine to five uh, machine that, that spits uh, people out at the end of their lives, mm -hmm. you know, people whose dreams are not truly fulfilled because they're, they're stuck, in, you know, in a mode of like, you know, oh, I got to make money, I got to make money, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 you know, and gather materialistic things. But a, a lot of dreams are squashed um, because of the of how society puts the pressure on on humanity to you know fight amongst each other and you know rape the planet to mm -hmm. until you know what is the next gener generation going to inherit after mm -hmm. all mm 
Right. And yeah. what for? What, what, what do they want with all that <laughs> money? Art yeah. is the manifestation of dreams. Mm -hmm. Art, creativity is and why time we... time is art, not what? money. Time is art, not what? money. That's it's right. why we incarnated in the first place. Yeah. Exactly. To create. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I think everyone's an artist. Everyone yeah. within. Yeah. Sometimes people look at our paintings, oh, that's amazing. I, would, I wish I could be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not an artist. And I look at them, I'm like, you're an artist. Everyone's an artist. You're alive. You know, you are in this planet to create. Right. So just because you're here, you have something that you maybe haven't found. But everyone's an artist. Everyone has something to to give to this planet, you know, mm, and to okay. the shift in consciousness. What were you going to say? Yeah, I was, I I have a lot of similar experiences with Umo. So because <coughs> people say, oh, I, you know, I, I I always ask people, what's your passion in life? You know, mm. um, and most people surprisingly don't know what their mission mm. or their passion is. Mm. You know, and so when they say, oh, you know, I, I wish I could paint or play music, I say you can, but it's a practice and it's a meditation. And, you know, whatever you, your, your mind desires and whatever your heart desires uh, needs um, the work to be put into it and, and the practice to be, be put into it. You can't, like, download, like, in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, maybe we'll, we'll get to that point where we could download, you know, and within minutes, we'll, you know, we'll have that knowledge. I think everyone is an artist. They may not yeah. be painting. They may be <clears throat> an artist singing. Different yeah. Dancing, even speaking. Yeah. Architecturally, you know, yeah. you, we, all, we all have our gifts. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. And so those gifts are meant to be shared with our communities, with yeah. the world. You know? And the reason for sharing the gifts is to increase our capacity to feel. Exactly. This is my whole theory about the mm -hmm. artist's role in creating new realities. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reason, uh, William Blake said, the imagination is the life of humanity. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is why we're here, too. And I call it how to make known the unknown. It's only mm. through art that the unknown manifests into the world. So it's, yeah. and it, the unknown, when it becomes known, expands our awareness. Mm -hmm. So especially visionary artists are leading the way into what's possible. And because they don't even know sometimes what they're <coughs> doing, they are in a way channeling the future for the rest of us to graduate to a higher uh, capacity of perception. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And also, like, you know, on, on, uh, on, on that note, with re regarding William Blake, wasn't it Albert Einstein that says that imagination is greater than knowledge? Right. You know, so you, you, you <clears throat> take that imagination and put it into action, mm -hmm. okay, then we're able to truly transcend um, those boundaries, if you want to, you know, see it that way, of what is possible mm. within e from, from within each of us. And that's why I love your stuff, because you're mm -hmm. showing us... Um, not only what's possible, what's what's yet to be possible. You know what yet is yet to be <laughs> created and imagined. And you know if you can stretch the limits of human perception, then you stretch the creative imagination of everyone who looks at your work. True. And that's what's so exciting. And mm -hmm. and thank you yeah. for uh, being warriors at the edge of creativity. That's why we're here. That is why <laughs> you're here. You found yeah. your passion. And thank you for what you do, Alan. You yeah. are you're the, an, also an the vessel, the bridge. Yeah, you're an incredible. Share this with everyone. You know, Alan's an incredible thought leader, and you, you've been at the at the cutting edge of you know uh, with new with your program for many years. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're still following you know your truth and your passion. You know, and and that you know we honor you. You know, uh -huh. thank you for that. Well, yeah. I do because thank you. Mm -hmm. I do because I want to know. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's possible. I want to know what is the leading edge of the, the future as it unfolds through the collective awareness. And if I can help manifest that and share that with others mm -hmm. and other people get inspired to be artists, creators, manifestors, visionaries. And everyone should. Peacemakers. Yeah. Peacemakers. That's mm -hmm. an art form. That's right. Not everyone can be a peacemaker. Right. I mean, that have the capacity. Mm -hmm. So finding your <clears throat> capacity to, uh, and it's usually what you're passionate about, right? That's true. When you're painting, isn't that you totally filled? Well, yeah. I mean, if you don't have passion for what you're doing, then why do it? Yeah. But when you're doing your thing, mm -hmm. is it totally consume you? I, I get lost uh, within it. I, you know, it, it feels as if 
there is no time. Mm -hmm. the, all everything dissolves, you know, and we, Some meditation. we become part of of the process. Yeah. You know, it's not like about like you know worried about oh, oh what's the outcome of this. It's really about mm -hmm. honoring the present mm. and allowing that to flow yeah. in, in, in a manner that you know that that transcends any sort of ego or any sort of like you know time limit. What's your highest passion, Umo, when you're free? Um, just um, I would say opening up more you know, my energy so I could share. And how do you do that? Uh, by, you know, becoming cr more creative every day. <coughs> Painting? You know, paint. uh, well, I do so many things, you know, that are all, all, all are related. Um, and I just, you know, wake up and I'm like, I just start feeling my passion is always there, you know. I start feeling I need to do this, I need to do this. And it's all about sharing the art, you know, about creating. Oh, so it's you like do a force. Music and you do yeah, a it's a force that's always there and it never stops. And I just feel I need to take it out, you know. So it comes out in so many different ways. Well, let's listen to some of your music as we close out and more mm -hmm. of these images. And I, I can't wait to see what you guys keep creating. Mm -hmm. You're pushing the boundaries of the possible with your images. So keep going. We're, we're just we humble do. servants, man. Humble mm -hmm. servants to the source. Mm -hmm. And to honor that source of love, you know, compassion, kindness, you know, peace that we need so desperately during these times. Yeah. You know, I'm also a musician as well. You know, it's All interesting right. Umo and I share a lot of interesting common common ground with each other you know and, mm -hmm. and so through music and through writing and filmmaking it all it's all parallel to mm -hmm. that process it's all part of the energy of you know um putting the intent out there to wake up others it will really be a different planet when everyone shift. taps into that creative force when yeah. they like you or me or maybe you wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and say <clears throat> How am I going to create today? Yeah. That's the planet yeah. of a utopian right. yeah. life that we were supposed to have. Right. And I also, mean. I mean, creativity also has its dark side. What's you know? that? What do you mean? Well, where, where people use their create, creative energy to build bombs yeah. or to build, you know, war, war machines. Well, I wouldn't say... Know? Creativity, it's still being created, but the result is kind of dark. Yeah, but that's right. I mean, if they use that energy to create something amazing, you know, imagine right. what we could have done by now. Right, mm -hmm. instead of creating bombs, yeah. they could create anti gravity machines. We would a zero point energy be somewhere else, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think creativity is just like electricity, it, it, it can just be used for, for the good or the mm -hmm. bad. But if we put it, an intention saying, I want to serve the greater good. Mm -hmm with this energy, this creative energy, then the, the flowering of, uh, of who we are as humans opens up. That's right. I mean, look at people like Tesla, who was, who was um, you know, shut down by, uh, mm. by certain agencies because he wanted to share free energy with the planet. You know, right. but but once again, those those institutions wanted to, you know, all they saw was greed and, you know, money and, and control. Yeah. You know, so when people try to live off the grid, uh, that they try to you know find those people or shut them down because they, they don't want them to collect you know rainwater or natural resources. But I think that's changing. Of course, that exists, and we have to acknowledge what's out there. Mm -hmm. But I think as those people in those corporate structures of control start to realize the value of their own human life, mm -hmm. why they came, then some spark of saying, well. I don't need to do this. I think that can wake up some of those controlling factors. Mm -hmm. So the more we produce art and beauty and joy, it's like those people that want to maintain the old world order mm -hmm. can start to, because they're humans just trying to live the best they know how, it's just that their conditioning is so strong that they think they have to stay in control. And I think because we're all humans, really, I don't like to demonize anybody, mm -hmm. even though some people... Oh, no. That oh, if who we knows if we're all humans well, on this planet? But I think <laughs> if we appe appeal to their humanity mm -hmm. with art and music and creativity, mm -hmm. then that's a way to transform, too. What would yeah. this world be like if there was no art? 
What is that? Oh my God. The earth without art would just be eh, eh, <laughs> <the age. Yeah. laughs> But uh, without, the only reason to incarnate, in my experience, is to express. Mm -hmm. That's why we came here, is to express whatever form it is. And that's, if the, without that um, drive, then why do people come? It's, it's, there's, there's only like um, robot-like mannerism. That's not a reason. So without art, there is no reason to be here. Right. Without True. films, without music, <coughs> without, you know, this is what makes up our experience. Yeah. And that's why the arts is like the first string, the first um, energy that's oppressed when governments become like totalitarian or, or despotic, mm -hmm. you know, they, they try to ban art. Because they don't know, want to make people feel. When uh, Winston Churchill during World War II said, you know, someone said to him, you know, in order to support the war, we have to cut the arts budget. <laughs> he said to them, well, what are we fighting for then? Mm, <laughs> so <know>? true, wow. <laughs> We're fighting for the power of each person to have that creative potential. Mm. So that's what's so exciting. Yes. Okay, I think we have to wrap up. Yes. I think we're getting. But how do people find you guys? Uh, well, I have a website. It's uh, Umo. It's H U M O Infinity Art.com. And also, I have an Instagram uh, that's Umo, H U M O underscore Maya, like the Mayans. So mm -hmm. that's very easy to remember. And you? And I'll, I'll place mine at, at the end credits of the, okay. of the footage. And mine is. New realities at earthlink.net is my email, newrealities.com, new realities events, and look for me on YouTube at youtube.com slash new realities. Thanks so much for watching. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Peacemakers, you. Thank, yes, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing your beauty. Thank you for being here.